When I say the word troll, most of you are probably thinking about a mythological creature dwelling under bridges or in caves, living off a diet of goats or princesses. But the kind of troll I want to talk to you about today dwell in fiber optic cables and binary digits, and they eat the peace of mind of other internet users for breakfast. I want to talk to you about internet trolls, the good, the bad, the ugly, and how you can defend yourselves and others against the bad kinds when you meet them in the digital forests. First of all, it's important to understand that trolling is as old as the internet itself, and that the term actually has nothing to do with mythological creatures, but it comes from a fishing technique, where you pull a lure through the water and you hope the fish will catch on. Much in the same way early internet trolling was posting an inflammatory comment or a ridiculous hoax in an online forum and hope that people would take your bait, that they would believe you were serious and get angry and react, providing you with hours of entertainment as you strang, strang them on on your lines. Trolling can be an amazing tool for comedy, poking fun at absurdity and showing how easily we are all fooled online. It can even shine a light on sensationalist media and bad politics. We can all enjoy a bit of internet trolling. I know I can. But trolling is not just fun and games anymore. Trolling is increasingly taking the forms of cyber mobs and online harassment to an extent where we are speaking of literal troll armies, mobilized and sometimes even paid to harass specific people until they leave the internet. Let me ask you a question. If you have ever witnessed trolling or digital harassment when you were on social media, raise your hand. If you have ever intervened when you saw it, keep your hand up. See, I can totally understand the many reasons you may have to ignore it when the trolls descend in a comment thread or upon a person. But I need you all to start being a bit more vigilant when you meet the trolls in the digital forests, and I'll tell you why. Let me start with an example. This is Sophie. She's a Canadian transgender woman and a cartoon artist. She does a comic called Assigned Male, which is about a group of transgender kids their everyday lives and general musings on gender identity. She has a web page and a successful Facebook page where she posts her comics and her fans talk about it. But the Facebook page also attracts a lot of hateful commentary and a lot of trolls posting stuff like, you're going to hell, there's no more than two genders, faggot, or be gone, degenerate. Sophie has a group of friends who help her administrate the page because it's too much work for one person. They erase comments like these. But at one point in 2017, a group of anonymous trolls from the website 4chan and various Facebook groups organized a so-called raid on Sophie. They agreed on a time to go to her web page and Facebook page in the hundreds and they left so many demeaning, harassing, and aggressive comments that the admins could not keep up and erase them all. Some of them also hacked her website, and they replaced her drawings with swastikas and violent imagery. And many found her address, and they posted it online. Sophie had to leave her home and go to a safe house due to the threats because they came from people who knew where she lived and were clear they wanted her dead. After the news of the successful rate broke, the anonymous trolls on 4chan celebrated their act like this. Fuck you guys, we did it. No, we didn't, we didn't go far enough. She, he, it is still alive on this planet, wasting valuable space. We need to step it up. I can tell you thousands of similar horror stories of critical journalists who are harassed and smeared by troll armies run by and paid for by regressive states. 
of politicians who are getting rape threats, dick pics, and whose faces are photoshopped onto pornographic images, of activists who are cyber-stalked by Tyler's mob, always at the ready to drown them in hate whenever they go online to speak about the issues they're working with, about bomb threats getting phoned in to get speaking agreements cancelled, on private photos being hacked and leaked, on organized misinformation campaigns designed to undermine your credibility and turn your friends against you. And make no mistake, the majority of these stories are about women and minorities. If you're a woman on the internet, especially if you're a woman of color, or if you belong to a gender or sexual or religious minority, you are at heightened risk of harassment when you go online to share your ideas or participate in public debates. You are the troll's favorite meal, so to speak. A recent survey done by Amnesty International across eight countries shows that 23% of average users, women who use social media, have experienced digital harassment at least once. A report that Reporters Without Borders came out with last year shows that two-thirds of female journalists have experienced harassment in relation to their job, a lot of it online. And in a related survey where Amnesty International asked Danish female politicians about their experiences with digital harassment, 100% of the women they asked had experienced it, regardless of political affiliation. The more prominent your work becomes, if you're a journalist, if you're an activist, if you're a politician, or if you're a public figure, the more likely the trolls are to find you and submit you to targeted harassment, smears, and threats. And this has very real repercussions for people like Sophie to share their ideas and participate in the public sphere. You need a very thick skin, solid knowledge of cybersecurity, a strong support network, and lots of time to deal with the constant attacks. But sometimes that's not even enough. Many of the people I'm speaking to who are experiencing trolling for extended periods of time tell me how they get worn out. The anxiousness and the stress and the worry of constantly being under attack just becomes too much. They fear for their safety, they can't sleep. So they stop sharing their ideas and debating on bigger social media platforms. They leave the woods for good. And the trolls have gotten exactly what they wanted. They have effectively silenced the people they were after. Civil society organizations are calling this the silencing effect of online harassment. And they are talking about it as a serious threat to freedom of speech. Which is an interesting problem, because if you've ever deleted a message from or blocked a troll, you will know that when you do that, they will accuse you of being a freedom of speech oppressing dictator. To many people, freedom of speech, apparently, is the right to say whatever you want, wherever you want, and to whoever you want. It's even the right to harass and spread hate. But what if your freedom of speech means the silencing of others? who are not free to enjoy their rights in this equation. Our social media platforms are notoriously terrible at community management. I can get kicked off Facebook for writing clitoris, but not for starting a racist Facebook group. If I report a threatening message, an underpaid contracted worker, usually somewhere in the global south, has a few seconds to determine whether that message, normally not in their own language, is against vague and imprecise community standards that are decided by a group of lawyers somewhere in Silicon Valley. I do believe we need much better community management from our social media platforms, because currently we're just exporting our toxic digital waste. I do believe we need a much more organic 
used to control the democratically built form of management of the social media platforms that have become so ingrained in our public spheres, in our very democracies. We need transparency around what is allowed and not allowed, and we need influence. The control of our public debate should not reside in the hands of secretive private companies. But I'm also a believer in doing something about this problem right now, today. We need to push for systemic change, but you also need to do something about this as individuals. You need to help take back the toxic digital spaces and clean them up. So I've got three things I want you to all go out and do when you're done listening to me talk. First of all, you need to get organized. You can't deal with the troll army on your own. Even a single troll will need a few people to fight it off. So get organized. Make a little group chat with a few friends who are comfortable getting engaged with you on social media every now and then. Agree on your rules, on how you call each other in to defend yourselves and others when the trolls arrive. Two, support the person who's attacked. Don't leave your friend behind in the troll cave while you scroll on to enjoy the pictures of cute kittens. Like I said, I can totally understand your reason to withdraw when you see toxic common threads or trolls descending on people. You might reason with yourself that this is just the internet and people need to grow a thicker skin, or don't feed the trolls, that will only make it worse, or you think that your peace of mind is better off if you ignore it, maybe you're afraid they'll come after you, you won't change their minds anyway. But what if you were attacked by hundreds of anonymous people online and nobody did anything to support you? Get your group of friends and intervene together. It can be something as small as a positive comment for the person who's attacked, just a little hard even, or liking the other positive comments. You can also engage the trolls directly and tell them off, or you can make fun of them, they hate that. Just don't be a silent bystander. Three, out and report the trolls. Many people disagree with me on this. They don't think you should out trolls, and they don't think we should report them to social media platforms either. The general idea, I guess, is to treat the trolls better than they treat you. I don't agree with this. The trolls won't leave the people they're attacking alone because you take the moral high road. They'll just be able to attack them in peace. So sometimes, outing trolls or blocking and reporting them can be the way to go. Let me give you an example. This is Nafisa. She is a Danish woman with Somali roots. She is active in politics, she blogs and debates. She's also a Muslim and wears a hijab. And this puts her at the receiving end of a lot of trolling and harassment. One day she got a message from a complete stranger. She'd never met him before, neither online or offline in her inbox. Take a walk in the woods and hang yourself, you disgusting piece of skin. Now this message got to her in a way that the anonymous hate messages she normally got didn't. She told me how she was suddenly worried when she went walking in the woods around her school. Maybe he knew where she was. And it was also kind of ominous that he didn't hide his name or his image, he wrote with a completely normal profile. And when she wrote him back and asked, why would you write something like that to me, he didn't respond. She wanted to hold him accountable. So she took a screenshot of the message and posted it to her Facebook page and explained to her followers and friends how exhausting it is to meet messages like these when you're a Muslim woman and taking part in public debates in Denmark. And also that if they had the energy to write him a firm but unthreatening reply, she would appreciate it. Her friends and followers overwhelmingly did. They wrote the guy kind messages about what an amazing person they thought she was 
and that they felt it was wrong of him to write messages like that to people and they felt he should apologize. He didn't apologize. But he is likely to think twice before sending messages like these to complete strangers again because his action had consequences. We need to make digital harassment and hateful trolling socially unacceptable. That will only happen if it has social consequences to write to a stranger that you think she should go hang herself in the woods. One consequence can be to have your terrible ex behavior exposed with your name on it. Another should be to be kicked off the platforms you're using to harass people and spread hate. Now, a lot of people also disagree with me on this. They don't think we should kick anyone off social media platforms, again, with reference to freedom of speech. But what if someone in the audience got up right now and started yelling any of these standard Twitter insults to me? What would we do? We'd kick them out, and none of you would get up and start defending their freedom of speech. You'd just think, God, what a jerk. Good riddance. We need to start applying the same principles online, because digital trash is like any other kind of waste. It stinks up the place if you don't take it out. Now, in the beginning, I asked you to raise your hand if you had intervened in digital violence or hateful trolling. If I'm giving this talk in five years, I hope to see you all raising your hand, because intervening will be as normal and socially encouraged as stopping a fight in the street. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>